I am Kat Woods and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to share one of my super easy, 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 easy tips you can use when it comes to marking up your Bible. Super easy. Don't know why uh, more people are not sharing it. I was inspired from one of, uh, I don't know, actually I just don't remember the person's name because we all know I'm horrible with names anyways. So I'm going to use that as my excuse for right now. But you do know who you are. I did not come up with this. I seen that person do it and I was totally inspired. So they are in my marking group. I do have both groups always linked in the description box below. So make sure you check it out. Come join us over there because people like to share how they're marking up their Bibles and it could just gives everyone information or inspiration. There we go. Yeah, and information. I had it right the first time. All right, so without further ado, let me hop on in. You don't need to only do this in this one Bible. I have a set of Thomas Nelson Bibles I'm about to share that are also a great option. And because I'm going to share Thomas Nelson, I have just, just wait, You're, you'll see. I don't want to give away too much at the beginning. I kind of want to make you watch the video. All right. So what I'm about to show you, again, you can use it almost in any Bible. You have to watch. Okay, I don't want to confuse people. Let me just get on in. Okay. So what I'm talking about, make sure you have a good reference Bible. All right. If you have a PSQ, let me grab one of them over here. They do have references, Crossway. Same, same thing as the PSQs. They have references, but they're down below. So kind of keep in mind what I'm about to share when it comes to the technique I'm about to show you, okay? Keep in mind where your references are and how you want the Bible to look overall. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. Now looking at this, it looks really, really marked up like there's something really big and exciting going on but it's not it's super easy so with these center column references at the beginning i didn't use or do all of them i'm not for sure why oh i did okay i was like i didn't do this one but there's a big block all right so let me just scan the whole page really close so you can check it out for yourself and kind of and don't worry, I will share the pin and do all the good stuff with you. All right, so a close up, you can kind of see what I am doing. So whenever it has, the verse has like this little letter over here, that's a reference. What we're going to want to do is find the reference and simply match it up. That's it. That's all you're doing. So as you're reading, you can be like, oh, well, there's a reference. Let's go find it. It's just super fast. The overall aesthetic look of it is amazing. Look at that. So you no longer have to worry about having your Bible all marked up, looking really, you know, interesting. I don't want to say cool, but it kind of is. But interesting looking. It looks like you're doing something. You're learning to mark up your Bible. You're learning how to... Um, be engaging with your Bible. This is a, an amazing tip for all beginners and seasoned Christians like myself. Absolutely love the way this looks. So you can use one color. This one in particular is, I don't have it here. I only have the G2. You can use the G2. It's a pilot G2. What happened to the red one though? I had the red and the black. It probably fell off in my purse. So the red one of this guy, I'm always sharing them, always raving about them. Absolutely love them. So what I will do is clip the two, the red, you will see the black one later on when I added it, but I just, you can use just one, literally one color, whatever color you want. You can use as many colors as you want, because if you look at the um, reference system, there's a lot of references that are really smashed in together. So that's a lot of red to be all squeezed in together like that. 
So I was like, let's try to change one up, alternate between red and black. So that's what I did the very next page. I alternated the red and black. And this is a red letter edition. So let's get back over here. Well, let me let me show you since we're looking at this. Now, depending on how, how I guess hard you're going to press down on that pin and how focused you're going to stay, it may bleed through. So keep that in mind. I did switch up the pin and now I'm going to end up using the Sharpie Artist Pins. So they're a little bit better, but again, they're felt tip. So they're even more inkier than these ones over here. So just keep in mind how much you're going to sit there. Because what you're doing is you're focusing in one area trying to fill in that triangle. You don't even need to do that. You can just simply make a triangle like this and that's it. That's all you should do. Don't worry about coloring in because when you do, you'll get some spots like this where the concentration of the ink is coming in. All right. So keep that in mind. But when you mark up your Bible, you kind of know what comes with the territory. So it's going to be your workhorse. It really doesn't matter. As long as you're engaging with the Bible and you're enjoying it, that's literally the only thing that matters. Okay, so let's go to the second page. This is where the red letter comes in play. So I thought to myself, I don't want red and red mixed together and I don't want black and black mixed together. Let me see if I have any of that over here. Yes, right here. So, no, it's black. Oh, no, there's only one. Yeah, but I mean, here's the black. There's the black and black and it just, you can still see it, yes. You can still see every spot that has it, but I figured for moving on through learning, sometimes I made a mistake and I will, it was supposed to be a red color because I had the black. The next one was supposed to be red. So you can use two colors if you wanted to, just to make it pop off the page. Like if you're looking at it from afar, that's the main one that really sticks up because it's a black pin going around black lettering. <laughs> So that right there is really what made me think I better change up black pin, red, red pin on red letter. So that's what I did on the very next page. It is a learning process. It is my Bible. This may make somebody cringe, but it's my Bible and it looks amazing when the whole book of the Bible is done. Again, it's super easy. Now, if you wanted to take this and go a little bit deeper into um, a more like of a Bible study, you want to bring out notes and stuff like that. Do this first, Mark. Okay, so you're we're reading a blessed. We're going to come over here, mark it out, then get your notebook out, write a blessed and write out these verses. Follow the verses. You could totally, totally do that. All right. So now I showed you what the center column references look like. There's a bunch of red letters. So there's a bunch of black ink. I have done red in here. That's because there is so much black. I thought maybe let's just mix it up a little bit. If we have in one chapter, three, four different references, let's go black, red, black. So I have done that too. And it kind of separates it over here. So this may look too busy to somebody or it may look just something enjoyable that you could just sit down and do one night. You can change it up through the whole rainbow. You don't even need just one or two colors. You can use as many colors as long as the reference is matching to the verse. That's the most important. So you can use however many colors as you want and just have a whole rainbow of colors that in my opinion will look pretty but if you just want to use one color you've seen what a full page of that looks like okay so let's say we don't have a center column reference because a lot of modern bibles they did away with that because they thought it looked too old we want more modern i i get it 
modern look and modern feel when it comes to the Bible because everyone thinks already the Bible is a super old book and they don't know how to relate to it. So I, I understand. This is an amazing one. If you want to do this, this study in particular, and you don't have a single reference Bible, this one, I would not this Bible in particular. I have five, four, four Bibles. Yeah, I have Nuggy. No, I have four Bibles that um, are an amazing choice. Different sizes, different options with all of them, but they're the same exact Bible. What do I mean? All right, so this is the compact Bible. This is from Thomas Nelson, and it is marketed as a reference Bible. This is a single column though. The last one was a double column and it had the center column references. This little guy, the prices of these two, well this one and one more Bible, they have one up like $20 because this was back in 20, 2019, 2022 or something like that. Let me see, this one in particular, yeah, 2021. So. They're, they're a little bit older. It may not, this one might not be too crazy of a difference, but prices range. We all know that. So this is a compact. Look how it's like a little chunky monkey. It looks like a perfect dupe and it's an easier translation because it is in the new King James. The cameo is the KJV translation. So it looks like the perfect dupe for the cameo. It's just single column. So it changes if you're not a fan of the double column. Maybe that's just too busy for you. You want a single column. Look at that. Uh, there we go. So it changes the overall feel of the Bible, let alone the translations. Now, when you look at this one, the references are in the outer margin. So they're not even right in the middle and you have all the arrows focused to the middle part. They're taking it out away from the text. So I don't have a page. I should have um, done like a page for you and shown you what it will look like. I can do one. I, I don't think I've done a page. This Bible takes pen highlighters. Again, amazingly, this is a lot of wet highlighters. So this is a Sharpie um, artist pen, I do believe. It may... It may be that other one. Oh, this brand. It may be this brand that I absolutely rave about, but I don't think so. I don't think I I found out about that until two years after this Bible. So more than likely, this is the Sharpie pen. So when you get a lot of highlighter, wet highlighter together like that, it will cause this wrinkle effect up here. So keep that in mind. I don't mind that. That doesn't bug me. I kind of like the way that feels. And then this is the back of it. Some people may not care and some people may cringe when it sees that. So keep in mind, but it's still excellent paper. All right, so I guess I could just use this page. Yeah, let's just use this page and I'm going to use the black so we can see what is going on. Since I have so much going on already here, I'm just gonna show you what we're going to be working with. So 32, we're gonna start 32, all right? Then the first focus phone, the first reference is going to be an A. So we're just going to, you can box it in, you can add a circle, you can do whatever. You can do a little heart. It does not matter. Come down here to 32. Now 32 has Deuteronomy and Job for that A letter. So we're going to box this in here. And the arrow, we're going to take it outside of the bubble here, through the bubble, and then right down there. All right? Super easy. Not really difficult. Again, if you want to go deeper, if this is just, okay, I want something a little bit more, write this down. Follow the chain. You can even write down this first verse. Put that down and then follow these two verses underneath it. Find out what the correlation is. Find out what, you know, why are they referencing the two? 
just you can do so much with just one little movement there okay so that's what this Bible will look like um, and it has a ton of references so you will have like the other one you're going to have like a lot of arrows so if you want to add different colors you want to alternate between the two keep that in mind all right so there is the compact little guy and it's compact so everything's going to be squished in a little bit more as you've seen in the cameo so let's go a size up which is the personal size so the personal size i have three different bibles for you all right all the same text block in all of these i'm going to share these because these two are exactly the same one's used one's not and then this is the more affordable one this is the one that i said had went up like twenty dollars they're selling it here for 30 39.99 now it's like 50. so still very very affordable i don't know if they have this particular beautiful floral cover anymore but they do have other other available options okay so let's go ahead and look at this one first it's going to have the same layout all of these bibles right here will be the same text block the only difference will be the price of the cover okay so this was gifted back in 2019 so that's why the price has changed a bit because it's quite it's like what five years old so look at this look at that beautiful room it's still just like the compact one but it's a little bit more spacious and you can also write your notes over here it i just i love it i love this layout um yours will not come with the green art guild i did that myself like you can see i'm coloring over here that beautiful and again i don't even know if they're still doing their paste down liners like this anymore it may be different that's just what they did back then that's this is the bible i have and this is what i have to show you okay so this is the affordable one this is what one of these bibles again still the single column reference bible i do believe they have a double column so for those of you who are like me and kind of prefer the double column don't get me wrong i still love this bible they do have that option too at least i believe they do this is also the same size as the heritage so if you like the esv translation you like the size and everything the chunkiness the heritage this is the same size just uh l and they're both single column literally both single column but the heritage don't have the references this one has the references all right so just like the other one same thing why i was going to show you this one and this one together because the covers are different and one is used and the other one is not so i kind of like showing you that so you can see it still has its original ribbons look at those ribbons they do such an amazing job that's stunning now i did do the presentation page or starting to do the presentation page i don't kind of like pre filling out the presentation page because what if when i finally get to the bible i don't want all the girly colors what if i wanted to do this one brown and green and i have all per you know so i quit pre <laughs> pre decorating my bibles until i'm like okay i'm ready for it so let me show you this is this one right here well used well loved let me make sure i don't have my government name okay because sometimes I want to just put my government name on here. and you People don't need to be knowing it. This one was back in 2021. All right. So grew my garden through all of these beautiful empty pages here. We'll no longer do that because obviously five years of glue being stuck, you know, soak into the pages. I do have a video explaining all this, why this has happened and all that warnings people don't tell you. So check out that video if you haven't. 
but you see how one of the how this Bible is plain like you can do a lot with it there's look look at that I love it there's a lot of mistakes that I've made because we just didn't know back then but I really enjoy flipping through don't skip out flipping through this Bible and seeing it well loved like this okay and this one is goat skin so this is a black goat skin and this is a brown goat skin they feel completely different too like not only are the is a color different but they feel they feel different this one has a squishy feel to it and this one has more of a you could take it out in the woods and be rough with it and then we have the true tone so there's all three of them let me back it up again same exact text block everything's the same on the inside you just have different choices of colors and you have different choices of pricing okay so if this wasn't amazing let me show you a little bit more of a blank one we have Layla Layla you want to say hi to everybody she's like no no I don't you said my name so you ruined it mom all right let me show you very quick what yours will, t will come looking like let me get you in closer fix the tripod there because all right it's a very beautiful very beautiful um very readable like you can see how bold it is in the comfort print and to me when the comfort print your tail is moving the lights missy when the comfort print is smaller i don't like it like some of the letters and stuff, like the T's are cut off and they don't look like T's. But when it's like the bigger size, like this one, 10 and up, beautiful. Really, really, really like it. And I believe it is a black letter too. Yes. It's just stunning. All right. So say that you like the center column and you like the margins, but what if you wanted an actual wide margin what if you wanted all of this but you wanted to up it they have that too no joke thomas nelson is amazing they think about everything so i shared a small one say you this is still a good size one but there's a compact one same text block let me show you side by side just so you're not just taking my word i'm telling you oh look it's the same now i don't know if it's the same pagination John 12. Let's go to John 12 over here. Um, John 12. Well, where is it at? So it's like not the, it's the middle of John 12. All right. Um, no, it's not the same pagination. It's kind of, but, but it's not. We have... 1146 over here and we have 1155 so it's probably due to the size all right but it's same translation same bible layout the size is what kind of makes the the page so it's not spot on but it's pretty close so if you want a tiny bible this is a perfect one if you want like a normal standard size bible there's so let's say you wanted a wide margin okay they did that too wide margin single column reference bible are you serious so this is the purple i did that to my ribbon my pen dropped and it was rolling all over the ribbon so that's what my ribbon looks like yours <laughs> will not come looking like that all right let's go to john oh no way okay this one's even better let's close this one up because you know what that one looks like and I reviewed this Bible. I reviewed over 200 Bibles. So sometimes I kind of forget what a Bible looks like. All right. It's just, I have so many that I have in this Bible paper is thicker than that one over there. Just keep that in mind also because they knew you were going to write. They knew you were going to highlight. You were going to mark it in because it's marketed as a wide margin. Unlike those ones over there. They gave you better paper. So if we see, we have the center column references. So all our arrows will be focused on the center. 
So they're going to keep it out of the outer margin, which gives you outer marginal notes. Amazing. So you can have your Bible looking super, like, uh, I don't know the word, like, um, it marked up. Like, okay, I'm, I'm a great theologian and I know exactly what I'm doing in my Bible. And it's the simplest little study ever. So you can have all of this amazing markings in your Bible. And then you can turn around and mark up, write up, put your prayers, your thoughts, your reflections in the outer margin space. And there's some in the gutter. Look at this over here. There's some in the gutter. So, will we? That is amazing. And again, the size, it's a standard size Bible. It isn't like too big because we know I don't like the super big uh, wide margins don't like them I have written out on the margins over here with my normal pens I always use these guys whenever you see any tons of writing like this those are the pens I use I use them for every single Bible I will never change them they last for years and years and years and years so not gonna change it they work for me for the way that I write. I don't like the infamous and famous microns because they're felt tip. They make my writing look all blob, like it's all blobbed together because, yeah. The pen that I have, it's very clear, it's very crisp. You can, you know, read it for the most part if you can read uh, cursive writing. So there's the black and the blue. And then you've seen the back of it. Absolutely amazing. The same show through as the actual text itself. So it's not darker than the, um, I guess, uh, text block ink, however you want to say that. But let's just hop over to the New Testament. Look, it's red letter. So for those of you like me who love red letter, Thomas Nelson does an amazing job. They're very compatible with Cambridge, which I always say Cambridge is the grandpappy of red letter. Cambridge does a blood, 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 blood red. Look at that. There ain't nothing pink with that red letter. That's, that's like blood, like the blood of Jesus, red letter. So beautiful. And then you want to get Thomas Nelson right here compared to it. It's not as dark. Let me get you in a little bit closer so you can see for yourself. Let me get over here. Take it out of the light so it's the light will make it a little bit. So it's very, very compatible. Look at that. So they do an amazing red letter too. Love it. All right. So I believe that's everything I wanted to show you. For those of you who email me, I get emails all the time, I get messages all the time, I get comments all the time of people asking, how can I get into my Bible? How can I mark my Bible? How can I study my Bible? A real simple, like simple way. I'm always going to refer you to this video. This is the easiest way that will get you started. This will get you in there to where you are breaking that habit of, I don't want to mess up my Bible. It's a brand new, crisp, clean Bible. The moment I make that one pin mark, everyone has the fear of they're going to mess it up. Like it's going to be ruined forever. And that's not the case. Even if you did mess it up, there's, don't use whiteout. People suggest that all the time. And I want to... I don't want to say, but I want to punch you in your face. Don't use whiteout in the Bible. What happens when you use whiteout on regular standard paper? You see this this white mark box wherever you use that whiteout. And then when you flip the paper over, what do you see? That same white box. So why would you want that on thin Bible paper? That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why people refer that. If you don't mind a little bit of washi tape or a little sticker, you can do that route. But if you don't want any of that, which I totally understand, I've shared this before and I've done this. Um, what Bible? 
give me a second, let me grab it. Because I want to show you personally that I do it to my premium Bibles. Okay, so this will make some of you cringe. And okay, well, whatever. If you're cringing and you're okay with putting white out on your Bible, uh, and fine, whatever, do you. That's you. You're okay with that. I'm not. I want my Bible to look as pretty as it can possibly be. That means no white out mark, no stickers, no washi tape, no nothing. Come back here where you have your tester page. This page is going to be already messed up. This page is trash. This page is nothing. You don't need it. All right. We have the gold gilding. We have the red trim. We have all the purties. If you make a mistake, come back here and cut out a piece of the paper. It's super easy. Glue it on right where you need it and you won't even tell because the paper is the same color, literally. Now, let me show you what I mean. And that's not gonna cut out the Word of God. I'm not defacing the Bible at all. This is, this is the index. This is the map index. We're never going to do anything with this. I could rip out the whole Bible page and it isn't the Bible, all right? So for all of you who are sitting there cringing and like, oh, I can't believe it. Well, you're going to think different when you look at my mistake versus somebody that is using a whiteout in their Bible. Where is it at? Um, okay. So I'm going to get you in nice and close. I did the mistake right here. Come here. Okay, come here. Get you guys over here. I don't need you blocking the sunlight. I need the sunlight. Wow, you back right there. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Now, look at this. Whoa. Let me get you in closer. Okay, we're going to go from top to bottom. I did a mistake. I did a huge mistake. I wrote something for a verse twice. So when you write a note for a verse two times, you kind of don't want that. So I had to erase two, not one word, not one sentence, two sentences. Can you tell? Can you see anything that, sh that shows that kind of mistake? You don't see no whiteout, you don't see no washi tape, and you don't see no sticker covering it. That's because I used its own paper to cover it up. And you can't even tell. You, you cannot see where it's at. I glued down the piece of paper. Literally glued it down. All right. Now let me get back to the back. Now do we see the mistake? I should have done it over here too because it comes through right there but I knew I was going to do this video so I kind of just I'm okay with it so I can show you I did make a mistake this right here I'm gonna go slow so you don't think I'm I'm cheating or anything all right here here we go let's get in nice and close you can kind of see the little words right there Look at the little words right there. I don't know if it will come up because I glued it. There, right there. Look. So I cut the back pieces of paper of this same Bible that does, doesn't even matter and glued it in right here. The edge, if I needed it to be all the way to the um, edge, I did it as close as I could. It still has the gilding on it. You see that gilding? It's still on the gilding. But I didn't. I put it as close as I could. But I'm not a perfectionist. But still. You can't even tell. That is amazing. So if you do for whatever reason. Make a mistake. i am rewritten two notes. That were for a different verse. I put it in the wrong spot. I did not want it there. So I didn't worry I didn't say up oh, forget about it I'm gonna close my Bible 
I'm never ever going to do this. My my life is over. The Bible's ruined. No. You just got to go in the back of the Bible that you are using because it's the same pipe the same paper. This paper right don't use the cardstock. Let me back you up now. Now I don't need you so close. <laughs> don't use this cardstock paper. Use the actual Bible paper, all right? And if for whatever reason you don't have a concordance, you don't have a map index, you don't have any of that, you could still do it, all right? Because you will always have a title page up here. You may not want that because you're going to see little pieces of paper cut out. So I would kind of stay away from the, the title page, in my opinion, but you will have other little pages. You will have the translator notes. You will have the table of contents. This one in particular has the full, even wide margin trans uh, translator note, not translator notes, the, what is this? The epistles to the dedicatory and yeah, the translator notes to the reader. No, but that's not what it is, is it? Talks about the King James Version. Okay, well, so you even have this and you have the full thing. So you have... Let me get all these little pieces of paper together. Not the title page, because we still want the Bible to look absolutely pristine. It does cost a lot of money, so we don't want it to look like we're just cutting it up. We have this big chunk of papers that we can use for any mistakes that you deem are not worthy enough to still be in your Bible. Okay? That's a, that's a lot. That is literally, that's a lot. I like to go in the back because you never look through the back. And even if someone, if you hand your Bible to somebody to look through, they don't look at the back of the Bible, all right? So they're not going to see some little pieces tore out here and there. And if you're going to, when you go to cut out the, bi the piece of paper back here, this piece, don't cut it so big that you end up throwing some of it away. Get the measuring. A stick ruler whatever you have measure out how much you need make it as close as possible and what I did because I didn't know how because I think I cut it a little bit too long so this mistake over here I tried to put it in as close to the edge as I could so I put it down but once I stuck it down to the glue it kind of shifted so it covered the words a little bit, so I needed to come back over here and cut it off so the, it didn't cover any of the words. And I still had the same amount of whiteness as I have with everything else. All right, my OCD kicks in and it just drives me nuts. So when I see people suggesting, use whiteout on your Bible, I'm like, no, why would you do that? The same thing with super glue, why would you do that? It just, I, I don't understand people's mindset sometimes, but again, it's your Bible. You can do whatever you want with it. It's just recommending these options to other people who may not really know um, what they're getting themselves into. It's just, I, I don't, I don't like it. I really don't like it. So when I have an opportunity to give my opinion to, I like to do it. <laughs> so there's never any mistake that you can do in your Bible that is worth not marking in it. You having the fear of, I'm going to mess something up, that's not worth not, not starting today. That's not worth not marking in it. So if you wrote something down, if you had a question, if you made a mark, if you did whatever, and a couple of years from now, you think differently, you are grown, you are transformed, you just don't think the same way, it's okay. It showed where you were at at that season. In your life, you were a baby Christian, a new Christian. By the way, for those of you who are curious why I keep calling you baby Christians, you're just a new Christian. Seasoned Christian, you've been in the, the walk a little bit longer, so you're just a bit seasoned more, all right? So that's all that that is. So don't have those fears and doubts. All that stuff comes from Satan. He is keeping you from your Bible, from gaining knowledge, from a reason. And by you 
allowing that crutch to keep you from engage, being engaging with your Bible. I had a comment on my last video talking about my wide margins. Someone was literally going off on me saying like, oh, I never mark in my Bible and stuff like that and whatever, whatever. It is good for the people who want to keep their Bibles clean. Totally. I have several Bibles that I keep clean myself that I like only for reading. So I understand the people that don't like marking in your Bible. But for those of us who like marking in our Bible, it does not mean we're doing something wrong. You're doing something right, especially with the Bible like this. You are meant, this Bible in particular is designed for you to write in it. Hence, the wide margins. That's why they gave that to you. That's why they put that there. So you don't have to cover up the words. You don't have to put sticky notes. You don't have to do all the extras. You can, you can do whatever you want to your Bible. But think of the Bible that you're using. Think of the person that you're talking to when you go off and say, well, I would never, I don't believe, I wouldn't do, and stuff like that. You're putting all these doubts, fears, worries into somebody when that's not anything that God is about. God is not a, about chaos. God is not about doubt. God is not about worry. He's not about, oh, you messed up the Bible. Shame on you. That's not anything that he's about. So all of those feelings, thoughts, and emotions that you have, it's only coming from one place. If Satan knows the Bible from cover to cover, he can regurgitate it back to you. What does that say about you as a child of God? Keep that in mind the next time you want to say something about marking in your Bible. Keep that in mind. And I'm not saying because you have a clean Bible, you are not um, being engaging. You are not active. You are not... You're like a lesser of a Christian because that's not it either. But for those of us who mark in our Bibles, we do it because that's what we need. I need to mark in my Bibles. I need to highlight. I need to be engaging because if I don't, I will never pick up a Bible again. I have to be active with my Bible. I have to be engaging with my Bible in order for my brain to stay focused on the Bible. If you don't need any of that, that's amazing. You're you're the bestest person ever. I don't believe God made everyone the same. We all know he didn't. It's right here in the word. He made all of us different for a reason. So we all learn differently. We all think differently. And we all study differently. And that's amazing. That's why I love sharing what I'm doing. Because sometimes it can give somebody an idea they can change it up four or five different ways and make it work best for them. I always say I'm not a teacher. I just share what I'm doing. If what I have works for you, amazing. If what I have doesn't work for you, amazing. So I'm leaving it with that. Stop fearing marking in your Bibles, you all. And then now I gave you something super, super easy. Look at this again one more time. For those of you who love a well-marked, a well-loved up Bible, that's easy to do. Two full columns, one whole page. If you want to look at the front and back. Four columns, two pages, totally marked up. You can even highlight. If you want to go through and highlight the references, you would now highlight it and marked in your Bible. What? Are you serious? Super easy to do. So, no excuses. We don't do that here on this channel. I won't let you. Okay? So, that is it. If you do have any questions for me, I'll leave them in the comment below. This was literally a Thomas Nelson day. I shared nothing but Thomas Nelson Bible with the hint of Cambridge, by the way. <laughs> All right. As always, remember, be a creative tool in our father's art box. I will talk to you all later. Bye.